Welcome back everyone to more disturbing videos. If conspiracy, mysterious, weird and strange is your thing, drop a like and subscribe and let's dive in. Do you know Freddy Krueger is based on a true life story? Freddy Krueger? Yeah. Really? So you know Freddy Krueger is? Nightmare on Elm Street. Yeah, yeah. So he is the one killer that can't kill you anywhere else except your dreams. I heard about Freddy, right? Yeah, yeah. So pretty much in the movie, what happens is these kids, they get cursed by Freddy Krueger. Mm. And whenever they go to bed, they have to stay up. They can't like go to sleep because if they go to sleep, Freddy's going to kill them yeah, in their yeah, dreams. Yeah. So check this out. The writer for Nightmare on Elm Street actually was inspired by a true life event. Mm. Now, the case was he heard this story of this Vietnamese family yeah. and these Vietnamese teenagers that were dying of cardiac arrest in their sleep for weird reasons. Uh -huh. And the reasons being was insane. So they they did like an interview. I think this is like a whole article on the family. Mm -hmm. it, I, I don't know if, it, if they were Vietnamese or Cambodian for sure, yeah. but there was like a concentration camp somewhere, but they fled to the States, okay. something like that, right? Anyways, when they started living, they, they moved into this house, like a farmhouse, and they're just living, living a simple life. Mm -hmm. But the son, he claimed that any time he went to bed, yeah. he would have a reoccurring dream of someone chasing him to try and kill him. Yeah. And he said to his father, like, I cannot go back to sleep. Like, I can't, if I go back to sleep, I'm going to die. That's what he said. Oh my God. So what ended up happening, the father gave him medication uh -huh. to try and keep him up and try to like, you know, stabilize him, whatever, this and that. And what happened? one night mm -hmm. it wasn't even night i think it was during the day actually he fell asleep he couldn't he couldn't handle it anymore he had to go for the sleep he went to sleep and the last thing the family heard was like a scream like a Dang. crazy a shriek of death pretty much mm, yeah. and they went upstairs to go check on him they found his body this like oh my God. mouth open wide in a scream nobody's touching him too nobody's touching him and just dead God, and that's what inspired freddy krueger the killer from the dreams, from the nightmares. It's crazy. Yeah. Nothing would surprise me if this was paranormal, but who's to say one of the parents just didn't slip some poison in their food? And those spots on this pizza are mice droppings. The Marion County Health Department tested the slices and says the droppings were baked into the product. This was Jonathan McNeil's pizza purchase. So you open up that pizza box and then what? And then I just really just lost my mind. Like, I just couldn't believe that they sold me a pizza with mice poop all on the bottom of it. Jonathan McNeil did not like what he saw in his pizza pie. And neither did his girlfriend, Star Carter. I looked at the rest of my pizza at the bottom, and I just seen it all over. Then I flipped the whole pizza over, and I seen it, and I freaked out. And I showed him, and we immediately knew what it was. Lab results also found mice hair on the product and concluded the sample was unacceptable and potentially hazardous. The pizza takeout was from the Little Caesars at 21st and Meridian Street in Indianapolis, all happening on February the 6th. Following Jonathan's complaint, the business temporarily lost its license and then reopened the next day to increased inspections. We want to make sure people feel safe where they eat. We want people to... Um... As the old saying goes, it ain't danger if it's extra flavor. What if I told you video games aren't just for entertainment? No, look closer and you'll see questionable symbols, narratives that feel a little too forced, like there's something hidden between the pixels. Sure, they've got wild storylines and graphics and yeah, they're addictive. But why is the video game industry so much less tightly guarded than say Hollywood? It's because it's already leading us exactly where they want us to go. A world where we're locked in our rooms, staring at screens. Think about it, we're staying home more and more. We play games with friends online instead of going outdoors. Even working from home has become the new normal. Gradually, everything we once left the house for is, well, disappearing. Less physical socializing, less need to go out and get things. And soon they'll say, hey, it's best not to leave your home at all. And that's when it gets real. You're in a small pod totally comfortable and everything you need is is provided food delivered by drones human interaction all in the metaverse no face-to-face -face contact no way to even leave if you wanted to you're surrounded by cameras with every word every reaction monitored and reality itself fed to you through a screen government food rations minimal living space constant surveillance and in that dark existence, every bit of freedom is confined to the digital metaverse. Work, friendships, entertainment, and even exercise 
all simulated. You'll see more of that virtual world than you will of the real one. And the craziest part? We've already been taught to love it, sitting in our pod, exploring our wide open digital world. I'm gonna go ahead and say this is just a joke for entertainment purposes. Throw a social credit system, a universal basic income, and punishment for bad behavior into the mix, and have got themselves obedient slaves who no longer have free choice. This clip just reminded me, but have any of you been noticing over the past few months there's been a lot more clips of NASA showing Earth in the news, like the floods and hurricanes that's been happening recently? used AI to digitize and rematerialize the essence of a plum. What we've done is we've cut a plum here and we're going to put it into a vial where the scent that's leaving the plum is being trapped inside of this vial. And then what we can do is take this file to a machine which can suck the air outside of this file, which contains the smell of the plum, and then analyze those molecules one by one. And when we have that, we can then take that formula and then reprint it. If we've done the whole process correctly, the thing that ends up reprinted, which is just gonna look like a clear liquid, is the distilled essence of the scent of a plum you've just cut into. And if they smell the same, it means that we've actually given computers a new sense. And the sense of smell is effectively the way that we turn the air around us into data. Like? Like the plum. <laughs> if we are almost at the point where we can teleport smells, then does that mean that we are able to smell the poo that comes out of our government's mouths? Are y'all seeing what I'm seeing? I can't even make this crap up. This is, I believe, Kim Kardashian's Halloween costume. Y'all, are you freaking kidding me? Are y'all kidding me? This... Facebook? TikTok is literally just what mainstream places are sharing about someone's Halloween costume and that is all. Y'all, what in the world would inspire someone to do this? You know, I can't put my finger on it, but something about this is pretty familiar. And this whole situation actually runs really deep as her great 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 grandma or whatever allegedly sparked up a deal with the devil through magic a long time ago to make her offspring famous. When someone shows you who they are, believe it, believe it, because they are showing you. Of course, we had this Halloween costume right beside my head right here. Y'all, we are living in a completely ridiculous time. Let me know your thoughts below. She can't be both a witch and a reptilian, and we know that the Kardashians are greedy, but I personally think that she's just having a pop at conspiracy theorists here.
It's a piece of history where we may never know of its origins, purpose, or even the reasons for being destroyed. There's also like a shocking amount of censorship. You may have seen like in yeah. uh, you know, Britain, there, <laughs> I kid you not, <laughs> how can this be real? They are releasing convicted pedophiles from prison in order to put people in prison for Facebook posts. But to be this fair, those are thing. posts that criticize the government, so they have a good reason. Um, well, they were actually, uh, some of these posts that I've, these ones I've seen, didn't actually criticize the government. <laughs> <laughs> or or, or they, 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 were, they were seen as, as sort of, as, as hate speech. Right. Um, so. Because they noticed the society getting crappier and crappier with every year, and they said so. Yeah. Um, I mean, th th there were, and this is, this is I'm sort of stating a fact, there, there were, um, migrant rape gangs in yes. in England that were gangs that would pr run around and prey on young girls gang rape them and some people f found that objectionable which people say it should be objectionable um, and uh, they were upset about that and so they complained about it online and were sent to prison That sounds crazy. Let's be honest here, the West has every right to criticise the ones who are above us if it's transparently obvious that they're not serving, helping or even protecting their people. So Gene and I are out on yet another adventure and last time we were out I, I caught some footage that quite frankly has me a little spooked and I haven't quite decided if I want to show it yet. Now it's not the first time that I catch something in the background while we're recording, like a deer that we didn't notice or some hikers that we didn't see while we were busy winching the jeeps out of a muddle or something but this was different now i i don't understand what i saw and i can't explain it uh so if you have seen anything like it please feel free to let me know what you think it is in the comments frankly it has me pretty spooked never captured any footage but tonight was different I would like to say that to say hi, but there is an invisible cloak known as quantum stealth that hides objects by bending light, but I highly doubt the average Joe would even have access to that kind of tech. Uh, experience with it. In the milieu of journalism or just- Nope, in my bed at night and I got attacked while I was asleep with my wife and four dogs in the bed and mauled, physically mauled. Um, in a spiritual attack by a demon? Yeah, by a demon or by something unseen that left is that right uh, claw marks on my sides on my so it left physical marks. oh they're still there yeah yeah a year and a half ago was your wife terrified i know you were i wasn't i was totally confused i woke up and i was couldn't breathe and i thought i was gonna suffocate and i walked around outside and then i walked in and my wife and dogs had not woken up and they're very light sleepers and then i had these terrible pains on my rib cage and on my shoulder and I was just in my boxer shorts and I went and flipped on the light in the bathroom and I had cl four claw marks on either side underneath my arms and on my left shoulder. And they're bleeding. Wait, they, they were bleeding? They were bleeding, yeah. No, they were actual claw marks. And I sleep on my side, so I wasn't clawing myself. I don't have long nails. <laughs> um, and they didn't fit my hands anyway. But yeah, that happened. So I, I don't, I'm not from a world where things like that happen. I never heard of anything like that happening before. I had no idea what that was. I knew it was spiritual immediately. You did? Okay, that was gonna be my question. Yeah. I, well, I don't understand to this you, day. I'm not gonna you, put it you didn't. Word. You didn't try to refute the spiritual part in your own mind. It went, you went right into the- Well, idea. it didn't make any sense and right. it doesn't now. Um, so, but I'm not from a, what do they call it? Faith tradition right. that, um, talks about things like that or even acknowledges their existence like there's nothing like that I've, I've never heard anybody say anything like that in my whole life what was the next day like well the next morning I woke up and I thought that was the weirdest dream I've ever had and then I saw blood on my sheets and I realized that was not a dream at all 
was like, oh, my assistant was like the only evangelical Christian I know, you know, well enough to call with something bizarre like that, but totally bizarre like that. And uh, she said, oh yeah, no, 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 that happens. Yeah, people are attacked in their bed by demons. What? <laughs> what are you even talking about? <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, I'm not leaving anything out and, um, and I'm not pretending to understand that. I can only say what happened to me and that did happen to me. And, uh, and then I was seized with this very intense desire to read the Bible, uh, which I then started without any study aids or anything. I bought a Bible that didn't have any. I, I'm not interested in editorializing in the Bible. I just want to read it and see what's in there myself. I have very low levels of trust for Christian pastors, most of whom, you know, I'm just not a fan at all. And uh, sorry to say that, but that's how I feel. And so I just didn't, I don't want to hear other people's opinions. I just want to see what's in there. And I, so I spent a year and a half reading it and then I started rereading it. And it was a, just a transformative experience for me, but I'm not, you know, holding myself out as someone from whom you could get theological advice because I'm sure, not. Of course, of course. I, mean, I don't know. I don't understand any of it, but Do yeah, that happened. God allowed the demon? I have no idea what happened. All I know is I was dead asleep with my wife and dogs and I woke up with claw marks on my rib cage underneath my arms and it didn't even make sense my arms would anyway whatever I'm not no one has to believe me I don't care it doesn't matter. but that happened to me Look. and uh so I just was like wow that that's real whatever that is I don't even not sure what it is it's but very real and so then that presence of that evil yeah launches something Now that sounds more like a Freddy Krueger experience. One thing I will say though, and I don't know if you have experienced this yourselves, but most nights I wake up because I either feel that something's touched me or I hear something or something's whispering in my ear. And then when I do wake up, sometimes I do feel this, this kind of dark presence that's around me. Story of this wife mm. and she had like, I think it was like a relative that yeah. they always thought was was like evil. like. They were doing some some witchcraft or some things on the side, but they really did not like their family. And this is this is where it gets scary, because you never know who has hatred towards you, right? Mm. And it just so happened comes from the relative. So the relative gave her a doll, a dollhouse. What they claim is like the moment they got the dollhouse, there was already a weird energy around it, mm. and. The mother always just did not like it. So yeah, yeah. eventually, like, yo, we gotta get rid of this. Like, it's yeah. just bad energy. Let's, let's get rid of it. Yeah. They decide to go and burn it, oh. right? In their head, they thought it was cursed. Yeah. But why would you burn it, though? <laughs> well, it was a good thing they burned it. Oh, why? Because they have a picture of when they're burning it. Yeah. And it shows the face of a demon in the flame. Oh, that's it, crazy. And it's gonna take a bit to find the picture, but it literally looks okay, like I a already demon. seen something like right here. When you see it, tell me the feeling you feel when you look at it. It's oh, there. is it around? Oh, is it? Yeah, around? you see it? Yo, it's, it's like this. Yeah, you like look at yeah, I look see at it. the face though. Wait, is it? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's a demon. Like, yeah, it has a. T yeah, crazy. Oh, I see it now. Oh but, but the feeling you get like looking at it is like yeah. something's wrong. Am I the only one who can't see this demon? I know I should be wearing glasses, but I honestly can't see it. Look at the f***ing stare it is. Pressing double jump. Pressing double jump. Nothing's happening. Press it again. Oh, goes on to Kamala Harris. Lovely follower from the USA sent me that video and it goes on a little bit longer. That person is clearly pressing Donald Trump. It doesn't do anything. They put the phone down, they bring it back up, they carry on pressing it and it highlights Kamala Harris. Now, the video I did yesterday when I was saying people are actually placing bets on these people and you can see it live on the side of a building. I said it from day dot, you will see something very dodgy in this election. Something will happen up in the upcoming days to it, which were a matter of days away. And if there is, I think something will happen. But we've seen these sort of things happening before. And you can't say the computer's broke because it actually voted for someone. Just the wrong person. When you could clearly see they was actually pressing Donald Trump. And I find it mental that, listen, listen, we all know what goes on. We all know. I'm telling you now, something dodgy will happen along the way of from now up until the fifth. Well, you know, Stevie Wonder could see it happening. The elites are grasping the straws at this point, but I do feel something very off about this election. I was shown this by a third party person who 
wished me to be able to observe it for a few hours because I am regarded as one of the world experts on the ancient culture known as the Paracas. Now the first obvious thing you can see are the eyes, the nose, and the mouth area. The mouth is incredibly tiny and the eyes appear to be quite large. The most astonishing aspect of it, of course, is that if it died at childbirth or three months old, that it is at least twice the size of a normal Homo sapiens sapiens. Its shape and size are not the result of water on the brain. You can also make out is this is the neck. This is where the spinal cord and vertebrae enter the skull, and you can see that it's way in the back. In a normal human, it's in the center. I really do need my eyes checked because I thought he was unraveling a potato. In the 1950s, a small Florida town had a suspiciously high number of residents with missing limbs. This was because Vernon was the site of a widespread insurance scam where residents would dismember themselves for a payout. The problem was so extensive, the town became known as Nub City. During this time, the city was in dire economic straits. All the railroad and mill jobs have dried up. One man who lost his limb in a mill accident began to tell residents how he received a large payout from his insurance policy. Word of this large payout must have spread among the community because more and more residents of the town began intentionally losing their limbs, and some even took out exorbitant life insurance policies directly before these horrible accidents befell them. These claims generally received payouts of $5,000 to $10,000, but as the scam went on, the claims increased in value as the residents became more bold. John Joseph Healy, an insurance investigator for Continental National American Insurance Group, was sent to Vernon once the claim started exceeding $100,000. He said to sit in your car on a sweltering summer evening on the main street of Nub City. He wrote in a report, watching anywhere from eight to a dozen cripples walking along the street gives the place a ghoulish, eerie atmosphere. By the mid-1960s, 50 of the town's 700 residents were members of the Nub Club. However, it was near impossible to convict scammers of fraud because jurors had a hard time believing that people would willingly amputate their own limbs and appendages. This practice finally ended in the late 1960s when premium rates became too high and insurers stopped doing business in the panhandle. That is wild high, but a serious question, if you were in their situation, would you ever do this? This is not the time to be playing. So y'all really finna sit up here and take TikTok for us for real, for real now? Like, I know what y'all was saying it before and it was a game and all this, this and that, but now y'all really saying January. We can't never have shit. Y'all take all the mother on the way. Instagram so stuck up in bougie and some fucking haters facebook haters like y'all taking everything away from us why would y'all do that to us what the, what is it i don't like nothing about it and i'm about to go start a whole protest by my mother self because i know damn well that thing ain't just say tiktok would be officially banned january 2025 my mother head hurt because this is ridiculous we have so much fun up on here and we get up on here and see all the you know the trends and stuff y'all want to take all the fun shit away from us but keep all the draining shit up on why y'all keeping everything else on that's draining take instagram away take facebook away take all that away don't take tiktok from us we live on TikTok. I'm honestly not sure how true this is and whether TikTok will be banned in January of next year. But if it does, at least you'll still be able to watch your TikToks here. So make sure you do sub up. There go, wee wee. Don't move. Hmm. Help! Huh? I'm in here! Help! Hmm. America. How do you like sitting on my lawn? Half ash, can we move the shun out of my ash? Do I have to wear pants? No, you're fine. If I wasn't here, hmm? it'd be a stupid world. I invented mm -hmm. the TV and telephone. Mm -hmm. Go back to the mud! You fat girl! And basically, mm -hmm. I had to scream at a little baby orphan. Let's go, Hermione. <laughs> I'm going to the toilet. Uh -huh. Hey, do you know if my boyfriend's as good as these soccer players? I want to focus on this. Is this football? Uh, no. <laughs> what a weird guy. He's my Italian crush. Here, taste the biscuit. Ugh, yuck. Mm. Come on, chow on the chicken. Mm. I, I chug chug beer. Beer. Mm -mm. You look good in that hat. Yes, yes, I am cool. <laughs> Fish up. Caca. Chompity chomp. 
These are great. The dirtier, the better. Thank you everyone for watching and I really do appreciate every one of you. Drop a like and subscribe if you haven't already and I hope to see you again in the next one. Take care, much love and I'll see you then.